an investment in more than $22 million for Florida's infrastructure and workforce. Let's listen. Lake County, town of Estatula, Mayor Mitchell Mack, Police Chief Walter Hoagland, and Town Kirk Graham Wells. Welcome. And then from Marion County, uh, we've got Carl Zalak, the Commission Chair, Commissioners Bryant Stone, County Administrator, uh, Munir Bune, sorry if I didn't get that one right, and then Don <laughs> Westgate. So we appreciate it, and we're excited to be able to make this award uh, today for many communities throughout Florida. Yes, Levy County, but also others. Before I do that, I would just like to say for one second, the Biden administration Look, they're not exactly on a winning streak, right? I mean, they've got a lot of problems. Uh, they, they, they fueled a ma nasty inflation. You look at gas prices, uh, four, four fifty, five dollars a gallon for unleaded, and that's way higher than it was just a year, year and a half ago. They're not doing anything to alleviate that by doing more domestic energy. They've printed so much money that you have massive inflation, 8.5 percent, but that's understating it because most of the things that matter have gone up way more than that. Uh, you're floundering uh, on the world stage. Uh, you have kind of, you're shaking hands with the air. You're doing the Easter Bunny. I mean, it's, it's really, I mean, it's sad, but it also is really negatively impacting people's lives. And so as if they don't have enough issues to deal with, they now have an idea. And I honestly thought this was just a belated April Fool's joke. But they are actually going to create, in the Department of Homeland Security, a Bureau of Disinformation. It's basically a ministry of truth. And what they want to do is they want to be able to put out false narratives without people being able to speak out and fight back. They want to be able to say things like Russia collusion and, and perpetuate hoaxes and then have people like us be silenced. They want to be able to advocate for COVID lockdowns. They want to be able to ad be advocate for school closures, things that are not supported by the evidence, but then when you speak out, uh, they want to stifle dissent. And so we reject this bureau in the state of Florida. We believe it's essential that individual Floridians and Americans uh, are able to speak out against false narratives trying to be jammed down our throats uh, by this regime. Uh, we know they actually appointed somebody to lead it uh, who herself has been an advocate for COVID lockdowns, who herself has put out disinformation about the Hunter Biden tapes, who supported Russia collusion conspiracy theories. And so uh, this is not acceptable. And uh, in Florida, we're not going to have it. And so let's get real here. Let's start dealing with issues that people actually care about. Let's stop trying. You know, when you're not doing well, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can try to do better, and so then maybe people will like what you're doing better, or you can try to shut up everybody who's criticizing your bad policies. It seems like they're trying to do the latter. Uh, they want to stifle dissent. And I can feel, though, the public is sick of this, and you also see it with Elon Musk purchasing Twitter. You know, they wanted to use Twitter as a way to enforce the narrative. You know, when you do things like talk about uh, things that, that conflict with what people like Fauci say or whatever, and these are very eminent people who will come out and show how what he's saying is wrong, they will silence. They'll deplatform you. They will, they will um, censor you. And so that is something for a free society to not be able to speak out on these major platforms where so much speech goes on. You know, that's a huge huge problem and Musk saw that and Musk saw people being censored he saw websites like the Babylon Bee a sat satire site being locked out because they had the temerity uh, to do satire about some of the transgender ideology and so what he's doing the I don't think the board wanted to accept the offer but they had to because financially it makes sense and we let it be known in Florida since our state pension fund has shares of Twitter that we we would absolutely hold the board of directors accountable if they breach their fiduciary duty. They've got to do what's right in the interest of the shareholders. They can't reject Musk's offer because they're worried that he's going
going to open it up and for political reasons. And so uh, I think that shows you there's a lot of momentum now uh, behind having free speech, beyond, a lot of momentum so that people can speak the truth, uh, particularly speaking the truth to a very decaying and discredited ruling elite in this country. And so this is going to be potentially an engine uh, where the American people can speak the truth and fight back. Uh, but clearly, uh, our entire principles that the country was founded on, uh, you cannot have a ministry of truth in this country. And so let's get real here. Let's let's make sure that we're doing things to benefit uh, Floridians and Americans, uh, but we're not going to let Biden get away with this one. So we'll be fighting back. You know, and it's sad with, you know, the, if you look at what we're doing economically in Florida, you know, we have the biggest budget surplus this state has ever had by a country mile. Uh, we had in March, they estimate how much revenue comes into the state, and our budget for this current fiscal year is $101.5 billion. We're getting six, seven hundred million over estimate which was what we had in March, and we're going to likely have the same in April. So just from when they did the most recent estimates, you've now taken in probably over $2 billion extra dollars that no one was even thinking about. We'll do May and June as well. And so we're going to end this fiscal year with by far the biggest budget surplus the state has ever seen. And so we're... And part of the, the reason why we've done it is because we've been responsible. We've protected people's freedoms and kept the economy open, which was a contrast to a lot of other places. We had schools open and all the things that really matter. But we've also understood that we need to be prepared because I, 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 if I had to bet, I would bet Biden would plunge this country into a recession. Look, I hope that's wrong. I don't want that to go. I want to keep things going well. But if you look at the mismanagement and the bad policies, we've got to prepare for that. And maybe Florida's doing well enough that we would be able able uh, to really uh, get through that without having a steep downturn. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, but when you do what they've done, uh, you are going to have to pay the piper at some point. And so the good news about Florida is we're ready. I have so much in reserve. We just plug. If there's any type of budget hiccup, you just plug the hole and move on. We literally would not have to do anything uh, major to deter us from our approach. And so that's really what good governance is about, making sure that you're looking at what may happen down the road and you're able to react accordingly and protect. So anybody in, in law enforcement, education, all that stuff, you know, we will make sure that, that we're meeting our priorities regardless of what's coming down you know, from the Brandon administration. And so we're, we're good. We're good. Um, and if you look at our unemployment rate in Florida, we actually have, we're, we're lower than the national average. If you look at jobs, we have more jobs filled today than prior to COVID. There's a lot of states that aren't even close to getting back to where they were yet. And I think that's a testament to the fact that the state's been, been governed much better than many of those other states. We added in, uh, in March,